Hello to all of you. This is Dr. Dawal Mehta and today we are going to talk about correspondence analysis in R. Basically, it's a data reduction technique. The only difference between principal component analysis and the correspondent analysis is that PC applies on continuous data while correspondence analysis applies on categorical data. Correspondence analysis summarizes a set of data into a two-dimensional graphical form. It is, it, is a, it is a technique which was proposed by Hirschfeld and later, later developed by Jean Paul. It is used to measure the correspondence between rows and columns based on two-way and multi-way tables. One can say that the correspondence analysis is a combination of multi-dimensional scaling and principal component analysis. Based on the type of the data, that is quantitative or qualitative, if you are having a quantitative data, we are using principal component analysis. If we are having a qualitative data, and if the number of variables are two, we use correspondence analysis. And if we are having more than two categorical variables, we use multiple correspondence analysis. Techniques to be used based on type of data. If all the variables are continuous, we use principal component. If all the variables are categorical, we use multiple correspondence analysis. If we are having data which is continuous as well as categorical, we use factor analysis. So this was this is the data which was given by Greenacre in 1983. Let's try to understand. On in the in the row, the, we are having senior managers, junior managers, senior executives, junior executive secretaries. And here on in the columns, we are having the amount of you can say how much they smoke. So senior managers for light. Uh, uh, light smoking is done by two senior manager, medium by three, heavy two, junior managers four, three, seven, and four. Now, what we will have to do first of all, we will have to take the uh, row total and then the column total, and then we will have to calculate the mass. Mass can be calculated in two ways one row wise, and another is column wise. So, when I say 4 divided by 61, I get 0 0.065. Again, 4 divided by 61, I get this. 25 divided by 61, I get this. So I, here, this is known as a column profiles. Now, the same thing I can also calculate row-wise. 4 divided by 11, 2 divided by 11. And if I calculate this way, then it is known as row profiles. So from this, I got the mass of columns and mass of rows. Based on the row profile and column profiles, these are jointly displays, uh, displayed in the symmetric plot or a French plot. It is very convenient to plot these points on the, on the graph so that we can visualize the actual association between the category and the amount of smoking. For this, directly, let us try to go in the R. You will have to activate the library CA correspondence analysis run. Let us see the smoke data. It's the same data set which we have already discussed. We will generate the mosaic plot to know the relationship between the amount of smoking and the category or the or the employment category. When I'll run it, you can see on your right hand side, senior executives, junior executives, they are taking more space on the mosaic plot, which means that the amount of smoking is, uh, sorry, none means senior executive are less in smoke. Heavy junior executives are more. I can convert this, I can plot this by using plot into bracket CA smoke. I'll directly get the, uh, the entire this data frame will be converted into two dimension. And we can see junior managers heavy smoking. Junior executives are in the are in the cat are in this compartment where they are associated with light or medium. I can also change the points of this based on the mass, which is calculated on column profiles and row profiles. So what I like, I will insert one more. Uh, you can say argument in the previous command line. Mass is equal to true. So I'll get. You can see the size of the points have changed. Now I want to carry out the uh so chi square between the employment category and the amount of smoking and my null hypothesis will be that there is no association between them or in other words the row and column variables of the contingency tables are independent of each other the alternative will be the row and column variables of the contingency table are dependent let us run this test 
we got the p value which is more than 0 0.05 and we can say that the row and column variables of the of the contingency table are independent of each other now i'll run fit 1 ca smoke and fit 1 i have got two dimensions dimension 1 and dimension 2 87.76 percentage and 11.76 percentage Now we have got this 87.76 percentage and 11.76 percentage. What the interpretation is that uh, the first and second axis, these are basically the first and second axis, they account for 87.80 percentage and 11.80 percentage of the inertia, that is a retention respectively. It's a cumulative is total of 99.5 percent of the total inertia, which is considered to be really good. There is no rule of thumb to choose a number of dimension to keep for the data interpretation. It depends on the research question and the researcher's need. Okay. Then we will uh, generate. We have already generated. Yeah. We want trace statistics to be calculated and the correlation coefficient. So the trace is the total inertia of the table and the correlation coefficient is calculated between uh, rows and column it is a square root of trace statistics so to calculate this we will have we, re we require the library factor mine r first of all install it then factor extra then to calculate the eigen value eigen get eigen fit one then you will run it and then run eigen so you get the same percentage we have previously calculated. Now on this basis, I'll calculate the trace statistics, which is sum of eigen dollar eigen values. So I get trace. And on that basis, if I take the square root of trace, I get the correlation coefficient. So as per uh, Bendiction and highly any value of the correlation above 0.2 you can see here it is 0.29 is considered to be uh, important here the value is 0.29 which is considered to be uh, uh, having a median correlation now we can represent all these things on uh, using the scree plot and for this we will be using fb's scree plot fit one so you can see the dimension one and the percentage of uh, variance explained by this it's the same thing uh, which we got from here it is 87.5 dimension 2 we are, it's able to explain 11 11.7 percentage of variance we can also uh, insert the threshold limit that is 33.3 percentage then i'll run it i'll get the threshold line you can see this red line now i'll calculate the row that is get c a row fit one i'll get row I'll activate the core plot and on that basis i'll run core plot raw dollar contribution is dot correlation false what i'll get let uh, just wait for a minute see dimension one dimension two and dimension three the employment categories which are there so senior managers the largest contribution goes on dimension three junior manager goes on dimension two senior executives goes on dimension one Similarly, I can do this for axis 1, 2, and 3 also. So run, and you can see that on uh, axis 1, which employment category is contributing? So senior executive is contributing maximum in, on axis 1, junior manager on axis 2. The command line is very simple. F is contribution, fit 1, comma, choice is equal to row, x is equal to 2. Row we have already calculated here on axis 3, we are getting senior manager again. I can also plot the row principle like this and the column principle, and I can also go for uh, computing on the basis of absolute contribution. Command line is plot fit one, mass is equal to true, contribution is absolute, map row green arrows false and true so i will get the length of this arrows talks about the eigenvalue 
the category which is having the largest eigenvalue is contributing maximum in explaining the variance. All these commands are available in my book Data Analysis Using R which is available on Amazon.in as well as Amazon.com. You can subscribe to my channel. You can follow me on LinkedIn and Twitter for the future videos of data science, artificial intelligence and machine learning. Thank you.